Obi-Wan Kenobi is the most disappointing thing since Prince Charles' coronation quiche. Welcome back to the Star Wars Retrospective, and in the last video I told you that I would rip into this TV show pretty hard. But I won't. It's not that bad, but it is definitely not good. The acting is great, the cinematography is pretty good, um, the world building isn't bad, but the writing and the story and the plot holes are just... Oof. Uh, also, if you just wanted an explanation on why this hasn't been getting, this series hasn't been getting frequent updates recently, please refer to my community tab, it has a lot of information on why. Uh, but yeah, let's get into it. The Star Wars franchise has captivated audiences for decades with its epic space opera saga. Uh, one of the most beloved characters within this universe is Obi-Wan, uh, the wise and skilled Jedi Master. However, even the most revered characters can fall victim to flawed storytelling. The TV show Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, attempted to explore the character's post-Revenge of the Sith journey, but unfortunately it su suffered from several significant flaws that hindered its potential. One of the primary shortcomings of the TV show Obi-Wan Kenobi lies in its character um, development. Um, Although Obi-Wan Kenobi is a complex and beloved character, the show fails to truly delve into his inner struggles and personal growth during his time on Tatooine. Instead, the series relies heavily on his existing characterization from the prequel and uh, original trilogy, leaving audiences craving a deeper exploration of his psyche. Another major flaw of this show is its uneven pacing, which detracts from the overall viewing experience. While it's understandable that a slow burn approach might be used to build tension and suspense, Obi-Wan fails to strike the right balance. Episodes often feel stagnant, with little narrative progression, leaving viewers longing for more meaningful plot developments. The lack of a cohesive and engaging narrative arc further exacerbates this issue, making it challenging to maintain interest in this show. In addition to Obi-Wan Kenobi, the show introduces several intriguing supporting characters. However, these characters are disappointingly underutilized and fail to receive the development that they deserve. Whether it's a familiar face from the Star Wars universe or a newly introduced character, their potential contributions to this narrative are largely unexplored, leaving them fe feeling like mere background noise. Uh, this missed opportunity deprives the audience of rich storytelling possibilities and prevents a more comprehensive and immersive experience. The TV show Obi-Wan Kenobi suffers from an inconsistent tone and narrative direction. At times, it attempts to capture the spirit of the original trilogy, invoking a sense of in adventure and hope. However, these moments are often overshadowed by conflicting tonal shifts that disrupt the overall cohesiveness of the series. The lack of a clear narrative direction exacerbates this problem, leaving viewers confused and disconnected from the story being presented. Despite being set in this expansive Star Wars universe, the TV show Obi-Wan Kenobi fails to fully capitalize on its potential. The series directly explores the broader galactic conflict uh, or, or provides meaningful connections to significant events within the franchise. This missed opportunity to expand the lore and build upon the existing Star Wars mythology ultimately leaves the show feeling isolated and disconnected from the larger narrative tapestry. While the TV show Obi-Wan Kenobi aimed to provide fans with ex exciting exploration of the iconic Jedi Master's story, it regrettably fell short in several crucial areas. The lack of compelling character development, inconsistent pacing, underutilization of supporting characters, inconsistent tone, and narrative direction, and failure to fully embrace the Star Wars universe contributed to its overall flaws. It's a reminder that even beloved characters and established franchises can stumble when not given the proper care and attention that they deserve. Hopefully future endeavors in the Star Wars universe will learn from these shortcomings and provide a more satisfying and immersive viewing experience for fans. The sh show suffers from weak dialogue and excessive exposition, which hampers the overall quality of the storytelling. Characters often deliver long-winded mon monologues that feel forced and unnatural, sacrificing authentic interactions for the sake of providing information. This reliance on exposition shows uh, slows down the narrative and makes it challenging for viewers 
to engage with the dialogue on a deeper level. A compelling antagonist can elevate a story, but Obi-Wan fails to deliver memorable villains, obviously, except Darth Vader. Um, uh, the show introduces new adversaries, but their motivations and backstories are often underdeveloped, re resulting in one-dimensional characters lacking the complexity and depth necessary to create a true sense of threat. The absence of a formidable and captivating villain diminishes the stakes and, and dampens the overall tension of the series. While it's important to honor and acknowledge the fan base, Obi-Wan Kenobi at, at times overindulges in fan service, sacrificing narrative coherence and organic storytelling. Nostalgic references and cameos from familiar characters are sprinkled throughout the sto story, but they often feel forced and unnecessary, disrupting the flow of the story. The excessive focus on fan service uh, detracts from the show's ability to establish its own identity and limits for its potential for originality. Although the Star Wars franchise is renowned for its visual effects and immersive production design, Obi-Wan Kenobi falls short in this aspect. The show's CGI effects sometimes feel unfinished or unpolished, creating a jarring contrast with the established visual standards of the Star Wars universe. Additionally, the production design lacks the grandeur and attention to detail seen in previous Star Wars installments, resulting in less immersive and visually captivating experiences. Uh, the TV show suffers from predictability and a lack of innovation in its plot twists. Many narrative turns or re revelations can be seen from a mile away, leaving r little room for genuine surprise or intrigue. The reliance on familiar tropes and formulaic storytelling dampens the excitement and makes the series feel less inventive and groundbreaking compared to the other entries in the Star Wars franchise. Obi-Wan Kenobi is not without its flaws. From lackluster character development to pacing issues, to underutilized supporting characters, inconsistent tone, narrative direction, weak dialogue, to excessive fan service, and shortcomings in visual effects and plot twists, the series struggles to live up to its potential. Despite its flaws, it's important to acknowledge that opinions may vary, and some viewers still find a lot of enjoyment out of this show. Uh, firstly, it provides an opportunity for fans to delve deeper into the character of Obi-Wan. Ewan McGregor's portrayal of the Jedi Knight in the prequel trilogy was pretty widely praised, and his return to the role in the series is exciting for many viewers. Additionally, the show will likely explore more of Tatooine and its inhabitants, which will expand upon the world-building already established in previous films and shows. Furthermore, with Je Deborah Chow as r director and writer, there is potential for strong storytelling and character development, although it doesn't always follow through. Her work on The Mandalorian has been well received by both critics and audiences alike, but that's not a whole lot to work with. And guess who I really hate? <laughs> Reva. Um, before I go on this tangent, please don't send hate to the actress for uh, or any of the people who I rag on in this video. I'm just having fun, and death threats to, like, Skylar White are really too far. That and the actress who played Rose, who will bring up... Uh, later in this retrospective series. The character of Reva in Obi-Wan Kenobi is a prime example of a Mary Sue character. She is portrayed as perfect, flawless, and has no real flaws or weaknesses. This makes her unrelatable uh, and uninteresting to the audience. Reva's abilities are also unrealistic and overpowered. She can do things that no other character in Star Wars could do, making her seem like a superhero rather than a believable character. She gets stabbed by Darth Vader, and the fact that she is so hateful towards Obi-Wan is the only reason that she lives. Like, what? Um, uh, Reva's, uh... Okay, wait, uh, hang on one sec. I need to calm down before I keep going here. Okay, okay. Um, furthermore, Riva's backstory is poorly developed and lacks depth. Her past is only briefly mentioned, leaving the audience with little understanding of who she is or what motivates her actions. Overall, Riva's uh, Mary Sue characteristics made her an unappealing character in the Obi-Wan TV show. 
uh, and the lack of relatability and realistic flaws make it difficult for viewers to connect with her on an emotional level. And that's a imp really important thing for uh, viewers to have, is a connection to the villain. Half the villains wouldn't work as well as they do in certain in certain movies, specifically Darth Vader, if, the, if they didn't even have some narrative connection to the audience. You could say that Darth Vader in Empire Strikes Back is given no relatability to the audience, but he is. I mean... There's there's a shot of of him literally like, uh, have having so many battle scars and wounds from his fight with Obi Wan, and it's just like yeah that's relatable because we still have you know, you know, uh, relatability, uh, and 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 we all have scars out of the things that we've had in our life, and the prequel trilogy only made that more apparent, um. If the writers wanted to create a truly compelling and engaging character, they need to give Reva more depth and make her more relatable to audiences. In the end, this show is not very good. It is exciting and fun in the moment, and god damn it, Darth Vader is fucking incredible in this show. It's just so disappointing that this show takes one of the most incredible characters from A New Hump hope and a uh, decent and funny and somewhat deep character from the prequels and turns it into this. I'm really happy, don't get me wrong, for Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen and it's really fun for the audience to see them re-embody these roles 20 years later. It's just a tough show for me to enjoy with my little nerd brain. And also the fact that Leia is here just adds so many fucking plot holes. Oh that's your father figure and someone you came to love? very much dying who's this five out of ten fun in the moment love the actors and darth vader hate everything else that's it for today guys and in the next video we will cover uh andor the most recent addition to the franchise and a lot of people like it and i well you'll have to wait for tomorrow so um what i'm gonna say now is just uh i am kind of tired at this point I, I just, I literally, like, today, uh, as of filming this, th today was my last day of school, and, like, I'm really burnt out from this year. I'm going to high school in, like, two months, so that's really scary, and it's just a point where I feel some significant burnout from reading this 50-page script. This script is 50 pages long. That that is, I mean, it, it has all of the movies and TV shows in one big script. Um, so basically, uh, I've I've had a lot of things on my plate recently. So right now, uh, please be patient. Uh, I'm sorry that uh, that I'm not uploading more often. If you do actually enjoy my videos, so um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. If you're watching this a couple days after upload, then the Andor video is already up. See you tomorrow, guys.